Hello and welcome to this Dawn Busters Train Whistle Taste Challenge. Kansas City Southern Eastbound Train making noise over here. Well, what do we have today? I will show you. We have a company of a, a whiskey from a company founded in 1866. Okay. The Jack Daniels number seven. Not old number seven, number seven. Tennessee whiskey. Green label. Green, gold, and white label. This is one liter. See the labels kind of feeling off. A lot of these labels will do that, like it wasn't it glued properly. Maybe I'll add some glue to it. Okay, uh, still have a pretty good amount left. This is no longer sold in Louisiana. Why? I don't know. Supposedly, and I have no official information. Supposedly, it's sold in Texas. I know it's sold in Tennessee. I saw it there. I saw it in Texas. So that's two places I know officially because I looked at it on the shelf. And then supposedly Pennsylvania, that's three. And two others, maybe Kentucky, I don't remember. Jack Daniels doesn't even list it in their portfolio. Brown Foreman, I should say, who owns Jack Daniels. But they reference it in their frequently asked questions. Come on, Blue. Frequently asked questions area. Uh, like uh, what is Jack Daniels Green Label, and they explain it. It's basically I'm, I'm putting the glue on the lid. It's basically a Jack Daniels that was uh, they say younger than the regular. Still four years though, because there's no age statement. And uh, man, this, they really didn't put too much glue here. And. It's lower and more centralized in the warehouse. The barrels are lower and more centralized in the rick house, the barrel house. In other words, they don't get enough heat exposure because on the tour, the tour guide explained that the best Jack Daniels is going to be because it's not an air conditioned building. It's open air. They have vents in the windows. It's covered, but um, he said the best Jack Daniels barrels are the ones that are high up, the highest level of the warehouse. I think it's like eight stories, the Rick House, and gets the most heat exposure. He said the heat makes it cure better in the barrels. Now, they might use some of the Jack Daniels from the lower, cooler barrels because Jack Daniels is mingled whiskey. It's not single barrel. You can get Jack Daniels single barrel. Jeremy Vincent says, hi, Ronald Train kicks it off. Nice. Yeah, it does. Uh, and he explained what that was. He said, Jack Daniel single barrel is not actually a special one. Or anything like that. He said, they just grab a barrel. There's the newspaper four minutes later. Then if I had to go to work, it would do me no good because I'd be at work already by the time the paper arrives. So I have, haven't been able to bring the paper to work lately. So it's really irritating. Uh, so they just grab a barrel and they write the number down and they bottle it and sell it for a lot more. <laughs> he said the problem with barrel, just grabbing a barrel and bottling it is that it varies like some of it would be too sweet, too, too, too harsh in some way. So what they do, like with Budweiser, they start mingling. They say mingle. They don't say blend, but it's the same thing. They mingle different JD barrels together to where they get to the center of this, I guess you call it a flavor wheel, to where it's supposed to taste like Jack Daniels was supposed to taste without any variances from the other ones. So every bottle you get is going to taste like every other bottle. 
Now, whether you like the taste or not, I could live without it, but I don't dislike it. Uh, it's going to taste like Jack Daniels, like Budweiser. It's going to always taste like Budweiser. So they take all these aging tanks of Budweiser and they start blending them. And I think they used the term blending at Anheuser Bush till they get to Budweiser. Now, they may not waste much of it because they might just keep blending all of it together. I don't know how it works. You say, well, what do they do with the rest of it? This I don't know. Jack Daniels, we can see what they do with their leftover. They make it the green label. So that might vary. It's a little cheaper, and it's something that people chase down. You see, they, they, they go look for it. So I'm only pouring a little bitty bit. Maybe not even enough, really, for this taste challenge. Now I'm going up against a 2016 introduction, which is a controversial one from what I've seen online. This is Virginia Black, which is really totally unrelated to Virginia. It's a strange thing that they would use this name. Looks like, a, I said, a 1986 cologne bottle. Let's all go to J.C. Penney. <laughs> in 1986 in a time machine and buy some of this cologne. We could get some Jordache jeans and a members only jacket. Oh yeah, and your girlfriend can buy a day glow orange mini skirt. Well, at least it's just not some ordinary looking bottle. It's glass too, it's not plastic, but it's kind of funny looking, but the, the flavor is what's controversial. Some people say, what's up with this stuff? Look, I don't know if it's flavored. And it's got something to do with Drake, so it's kind of overpriced, I guess, $38.99 for the normal price. I got it for five bucks for a half size bottle. That's $10 for a regular size bottle. So I paid $10 as opposed to $38.99. You say, yeah, but you didn't get that beautiful cardboard box with that like rubberized finish on the outside. Yeah, I know, I can live without that. I don't keep those boxes anywhere. I just throw them away because I don't have room for that. So I think initially the Virginia Black was like a big push and then it didn't really kind of catch on. So will you see it around in five years? I mean, probably not. You ever seen an advertisement on TV for it? They may have had some like on BET or something. I haven't seen it. Have you seen point of sale advertisements in grocery stores or liquor stores? I haven't. In fact, oh, and it was on, it's on the very top shelf at Mathurns. In fact, I was totally unaware of it until I went to Savannah Discount. When, when was that? Late, late last year and ran across it in that on that sales display for five bucks. So and then I went back to look at other stuff and I bought another bottle for five dollars. So I bought 10. All right. So it's a blend of bourbons, uh, apparently straight bourbon. I say apparently, this I don't know, because all it says on the website is two-year, three-year-old, and four-year-old bourbons. May not be straight bourbon. You say it could be blended bourbon. Seems to me they would have mentioned that, uh, but I don't know about that. And um, it, uh, It's not listed as a bourbon on their label. It's American whiskey. But it's an American whiskey derived from three bourbons, okay? There's nothing about grain neutral spirits added or anything like that. It's unusually dark though. It's a two year age, two year age, right? Because you always have to give the age of the youngest whiskey. You could have a 50 year old whiskey. If you blend it with a two year age, you gotta call it two year old whiskey. Oh, now it's dark. That's unusually dark. You may not be able to see. You see, this is the problem with daylight savings time. It's dark at dawn because it ain't really dawn. You say, no, it's six o'clock central. No, it's really five o'clock central. <laughs> That's why if you wake up at your normal, like you said, I wake up at 4.30 every day to go to work, but now I feel terribly tired. Yeah, because you're waking up an hour earlier than you really should be. And I think there's a big movement against daylight savings time. Seems to be a growing movement. So this is a lot lighter. Well, I can see the light shining through the glasses, so you probably can't see it so well. But this one is gold. The JD is gold. And the Virginia Black is almost a mahogany color. 
almost a mahogany color much darker unusually dark is it colored with caramel coloring i wouldn't be shocked i wouldn't be shocked now david my friend david i'm going to post a liquor uh whiskey review later that we did at his house it was uh what whiskey was that um i can't even remember he's always got so many you know i can't keep up i can't even remember what he's got we did a weller a very expensive weller but i deleted that video he said why'd you delete it i said it was a little indicative of we had sampled multiple items before the video if you know what i mean i said but then i regretted it i said well i should have posted it on anti-war the other channel i have i don't get a lot of viewers there yet so there would be less people watching and saying hey i watched that you guys were too exuberant or whatever you know but um it was mardi gras day so but i wanted a, a video posted that would be more coherent yeah, more coherent, more put, more held together. Because we're talking about the road goes this way, then it goes that way, then it goes that way. And I was like, no, 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 that's too much. <laughs> Although what we said about the whiskey was accurate, it was very good. Weller, it was this expensive one. He said it only comes out a few months a year, and he bought it. But uh, you had to get through all that. You know, stumbling, fumbling. Jeremy Vincent says, smiley face. All right. Now, I got to mix these up and I might have to close my eyes because you know why. If I look down at them, I'm going to know exactly what it is by just virtue of how it appears. We did a hangout last night. I appreciate Jeremy joining us on Wildcard Wednesday and Jean H. Pierre and John Anile and Ronnie S. and Michael Komarov. And um, James P. Madonna. We had a big group. And well, the beers we had were not top flight. They were all more in the B range, good, but not excellent. But they were enjoyable. And then um, I was telling Michael Komarov, don't drink that 16 ounce. But he, he insisted. But I could see it by the time we got off air, I was starting to get to him. He was saying, oh, I'm not affected too much, am I? And I'm like, mm, a little bit. But I, I'm not worried about the effects. I'm more worried about the bad effects, not slurring your words. I'm the bad effects for that kind of stuff is like vomiting, feeling like hell the next day, and having the feeling that you've been drugged. And that will go on all day. That's after one bottle. Uh, that stuff to me, that kind of stuff, that Eastern European ultra high gravity lager, 14, 15, 16%. Oh, no. Nah. Now, you might say, oh, I drink a lot of stuff. I love that feeling. Well, you might love it. I hate it. I don't like to feel like I've been drugged. You'd be walking around your house looking like George Foreman in the ring in Zaire in 1974. You say, uh oh, don't go there. What are you trying to say? The man was drugged? I didn't say he was drugged. I said, you go look like him. However, he did seem unusually sluggish. He said in commentary later, he felt abnormal, like he had no energy for some strange reason. You say, boxing? You mean prize fighting, boxing could be rigged, could be infected with corruption? <laughs> nah, not boxing, not horse racing, not college basketball <laughs> recruiting. <laughs> All right. That might be why pro wrestling's the best thing to watch, because you know it's fake. The other sports, you believe in that it's not fake. But maybe it is. Maybe it is rigged. Maybe I'm being fooled. Okay, that it really isn't a competition. Okay, Jeremy Vincent said, I'm going to buy Jean some new earbuds. His problem is not the earbuds. He takes them out. And then he walks around the yard and he's got all this. I mean, you know, it's only been going on for five years, though. So, 
16% alcohol, pretty darn strong. Yeah, too strong, I say. Beer is not designed to be that way. Beer is supposed to be 4 to 6% alcohol, and 6 is pushing it. But you get these Eastern European beers, which are more like gimmick beers. Even Santa Claus is a gimmick beer. 14%, come on now. Yeah, I've done a million reviews, you know, figuratively. I've done so many reviews of those things, but it's always the same result. It's just like, Ugh. here I'm drinking liquor this morning, whiskey. Well, that's supposed to be strong. And what do you drink? Three ounces of it? Michael Comer also over there drinking 17 ounces, nearly 16.9 ounces. I mean, that's just, uh-uh. Okay, this is Jack Daniels. That's how fast I determine it. I know it's Jack Daniels because it's got that soured mash aroma. It's like very pungent, rich. It's like sourdough bagel. You ever notice that Jack Daniels has like that sour note nose? It's real like, how do you describe that? Oh, yeah, it's like strong, strong corn grits. Oh, yeah, and it's got charred wood and all. But so, see, you're not going to confuse Jack Daniels with too many other whiskeys. Now, you might not like it as much as other whiskeys. That's fine. But you're not going to, I don't think, honestly, you would say it's the same. It's like Budweiser. You could say, I hate Budweiser. I hate Budweiser. Okay, fine, you hate it. But you're not going to find too many people going to say, oh, yeah, Budweiser tastes just like all the rest. No. I find that's why people hate it, because it doesn't taste like all the rest. And what it tastes like, they don't like. It's got that strong rice. It's a rice lager. It's a strong rice beer. It's got a strange yeast quality. It's almost like if you hold Budweiser up to the proper lighting, it almost looks green. Like, why is it like that? And it has a strange flavor. Like, it's... People say, oh, I get a terrible headache with Budweiser. Oh, it just kills me. I I have been saying for years. I think it's the yeast strain. Oh, oh, I've never tasted a beer like Budweiser in my life. Any other one. Doesn't give me a headache at all. Never. No beer ever gave me a headache. My friend Paul said he didn't drink alcohol at all really anymore. I said, why you don't drink it? It just gives me these terrible headaches. But he always caught bad headaches when he was young. Well, you don't catch a headache. We say that around here because... We have a strange way of speaking, but you know what I mean? Like they'll say, what they say, I caught a headache. You know what I mean? He developed a headache. But um, I said, well, I would be a total non-drinker in one day if I was catching, <laughs> if I was developing headaches every time I drank, I would give it up that quick. You'd be seeing some other kind of videos. But he does. But anyway, so Budweiser, I only said that it was like an ice pick through the forehead. I said, when you drink Budweiser, it's like somebody shoving an ice pick in your temple. You say, well, that doesn't sound too pleasant. And it's remarkable. It's distinctive. Still the number one beer in the world. I know what people are going to say. Nah, -uh. I read something on Vine Pair, and they said snow beer is the number one beer in the world. That article is like bogus, man. Because what they're doing is they're taking Budweiser, one beer brand, and they're comparing it to snow, all their varieties in China. There's like 20 varieties of snow. And they're saying it's the number one selling beer. Well, okay, well then let's take Budweiser and Bud Light. Those two together would easily outpace snow. And then if, and then if you added Budweiser, Bud Light Platinum, uh, Bud Select, Bud, uh, what's the other Select, the, uh, Bud, the, the, the light one, I can't remember what it's called, um, the super light, and added uh, Bud Ice. I mean, so you got to watch these comparisons. Yeah, this is Virginia Black. It's got two um, tea-like qualities. Tea. Tea, dark, heavy, char. It must be their alligator char over there in Indiana and in Lawrenceburg, which I love the tour, and they don't give tours yet. They said they're working on it. 
there's a lot of wood here now to see i think my friend david was interpreting interpreting that as flavoring but i don't believe it's flavored i just think they're using that heavy alligator char and they got the blend of the three different bourbon ages and it's giving it and it might be adding caramel color which wouldn't have flavor and it's giving it that strange character and it's in in some ways in some ways it's reminding me or reminiscent of the redemption high rye which is only age one year <laughs> oh i'm sorry at least one year at least one whole year of bourbon now you see why it's so light in appearance uh and you know redemption is not colored because it wouldn't be certified bourbon yeah you can age a bourbon for only a year and it could be a bourbon but it can't be colored i was thoroughly unimpressed with redemption high ride but um tanya Mikowski liked it but it has some carryover to this oh carryover to this so jack daniels redemption i never even tasted it See, this is a taste challenge that doesn't require tasting. I'm going to look now. I'm going to taste them, obviously. I'm going to drink them all, but J JD. If I could read it, yeah. Yeah, JD. <laughs> I didn't write too clearly, and the pen was like, the ink was, okay. And then VB, VB, Victoria Bitters, VB. Oh, that's a spicy note. Do they add cinnamon to it? No. Michael was drinking a run, run, can rink to sky Lithuania beer called F and Awesome. Anxious to see how he feels today. Ha. Huh? Okay, I'll send him a webcam then. <laughs> yeah. Rink to sky. They are specialists in ultra strong bringing you to one knee beers. And I think I could be wrong, but aren't they somehow connected to Carlsberg? I know Baltica is owned by Carl. You see, because Carlsberg of Denmark has gone around buying up emerging breweries, you know, from like emerging countries. And uh, Carlsberg is kind of a specialist in high gravity beers, you know, like right? super strong lagers. So you might say, isn't alcoholism a big problem in Eastern Europe, it's especially white Russia and Russia? You do know there's two Russias, right? <laughs> there's the Russian Federation headquartered in Moscow, right? Vladimir Putin, the president. And then there's uh, Belarus, that's white Russia in English, headquartered in Minsk, Minsk, and their president, what, Lukashenko. And they're very closely associated with each other. They're in like a quasi union, a common defense. I think they use a common currency. Okay. But I believe there's some bad problems with alcoholism, specifically vodka. They drink it all the time. This is so quintessentially Jack Daniels. And I'm, um, <laughs> I, how you say that word? I, apostrophe M, I'm, I'm. It's with an I, right? I'm not um. Um is A H M. I'm. How do you speak English? Not. I'm not particularly a, in adoration of it because doggone if it's not so corn oriented. Golly, it's like eating a a bowl of Quaker grits. But that's white corn, white hominy. This is yellow hominy. You could go to the grocery store and buy a, a can of they sell it at Walmart and other stores. It's called Hominy. It's, it's called Bushes. You know Bush Bushes Beans of a Memphis old company. Of course, it has salt added, you know, and sodium to keep it from spoiling. But uh, the yellow Hominy and the white, they'd be different tasting. They're corn. They're different tasting. You could just put it in a bowl and heat it up. It is pretty good to eat. But uh, this has that same character as that white hominy that yellow corn grits ho oh, i mean the white hominy ugh, the yellow hominy excuse me
this does not. I don't know what they're trying to do with this Virginia Black. They're trying to make it taste higher grade than it is, I think. There's some kind of charcoal sugar thing. If it's listed as American whiskey, it could be flavored. And perhaps, perhaps they're using something that's not very different than rock candy. You know what I'm talking about. Rock candy comes on a stick. It's sugar, the type of pro sugar. It does have rock candy characteristics. Get the char. Oh, and the body on both of these is medium and the finish is like a little longer on the Virginia Black. You get the wood, you get the vanilla, you get the, but it's, I think it's geared to draw in brandy drinkers, cognac drinkers, Drake hip-hop culture, urban drinking, BET viewership. You're saying, don't go there. I always go where the trail leads, okay? And uh, I like to look at these things in a very objective, but market-oriented and and a market analytical way. So I think they're trying to make it taste a little more similar to what you would get in a E and J VS, but a lot. This is a lot less harsh. You know, the E and J VS has that jackhammer smoothness. If you like somebody running a jackhammer, cut breaking up concrete next to you while you're trying to relax, and it's all in your ears, and it's really harsh. Or, uh, or even more so, a Hennessy VS, which you know is much smoother than E and J VS. Hennessy. You say, but that's grape. <laughs> that's made from grapes. I know. But I think they're trying to somehow make a crossover into their cognac experience. But then the question is, why would somebody who drinks Hennessy VS go and buy this? It, they're the same price. You say, oh, because of Drake. Then they could tell people they drink and Drake's product. That would only work for a little while because you know how the pop music business goes. These stars are hot today and cold tomorrow. In, in 2016, maybe Drake was the biggest thing. Now, it's like Would Lady Gaga wine be big now? Would it really? Maybe. What about Tiffany beer? Say Tiffany beer. Yeah, you know, remember when Tiffany was popular for a week? We got Iron Maiden. We see that has a long history, Iron Maiden. So even though they're not like popular as they used to be, and they were all never top 40 radio popular, but that's got enough of a fan base that they'll run out and pay $6.99 for a 500 milliliter bottle of ordinary ale. Did I dislike the Trooper? No, I liked it, but it wasn't worth the price. Okay, when Dornax had it for two eighty eight dollars a can, yeah, it was worth it. But it, it's just, you're paying for the name. Or the ACDC beer, or the Kiss beer, or the Queen beer. Those have a marketability because those bands are enduring, you know, even though they're past their prime, you see. Uh, but these other things, you say, well, 
what are you saying? You wouldn't buy a um, Spice Girls spiced ale? I would buy a Spice Girls spice ale. But it wouldn't be that. I mean, 22 years ago, yeah, you would have really made some money off of it. But now, I like Sporty Spice when she did those flips and wore those shy outfits. Okay, I'll admit that. All right. But it deteriorated very quickly. Tastes like rock candy, Post Malone now. <laughs> it does taste like rock candy. Mm. What would I buy? If I had a choice between Jack Daniels, Green Label, the number seven, and uh, Virginia Black, which would I pick? Oh, neither one. <laughs> I really wouldn't pick either one because the Virginia Black costs too much. Oh, I only paid 10 bucks. Okay, so let's say my discount price. Yeah, I guess I'd take Virginia Black over Jack Daniels Green Label, honestly. It's got more smoky charcoal, a little more harsh bitterness, which in, in, in this case is good, a good, a good quality. Yeah, it's just a little better to me. Now, my friend Dave is like, you're wrong, you're wrong. I'm like, no, I'm right for me. I'm speaking my truth. <laughs> This green label, oh, uh, wow. Well, um, it's too much cornbread. And I was complaining about this a year ago, so this is nothing new. It's just, you say, what about the regular Jack Daniels? That's got that, it's got that problem too. I mean, if you want to drink cornbread, that's fine. I mean, I'm not an anti-cornbreadite. But. You say, well, the guys at the hot rod shop, that's all they drink. It's Jack Daniels Black Label. Well, yeah, but they don't do this with it. They simply take shots of it all night. You know what I'm saying? They got shot glass and they pour a little bit. And they... They're using it as an alcohol delivery, and it's fine for that. It's fine. It's not bad. I'm not saying it's bad. No, 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 no. Jack Daniels is not bad. But uh, okay, Mathurin's got Evan Williams Green Label just right now. Right now, the big plastic 1.75 liter, people call that a half gallon, 1.75 liter uh, um, um, bottle. $16.99. This thing is going to cost, this is only a liter. That's bigger than this. That's got 750 milliliters extra over this. I know it's plastic, this is glass. But this is twenty four dollars, twenty five dollars, something like that, something like that. Now, uh, I think the Evan Williams is better than this. You say no, no, don't go there. Evan Williams Green Label charcoal filtered. This is charcoal mellowed. Ah, I think that I would rather drink the Evan Williams Green Label. I can get a bottle of that for ten ninety nine, regular size bottle, ten ninety nine at, at Walmart glass. Yeah, Heaven Hill knows where to send the checks. Do I secretly work for Heaven Hill? I wish I did. I just think it's better now. Which is where I feel about it. So Virginia Black does win today. Yesterday was a tie. Two days ago was a tie. When I did the Black Label Jack Daniels and Virginia Black, it was a tie. And I said, either one. It's a tie, a tie, a tie. Now today, the green label's losing. What is that telling me? Maybe the green label is inferior. I like the Evan Williams black label too, says Jeremy. Yeah, I do like that one. But around here in Louisiana, for whatever reason, 
the green label is like the big one. You see that everywhere. I mean, you do see the black label, of course, too. But it appears to me that the green label is selling better, probably because it's cheaper. And Louisiana is a low income state relative to the other 50, other 49 states. Yes, that's probably a big factor. Uh, but uh, I think another factor is that people just like the taste. So that's it for this taste challenge. Um, Honestly, when I did this taste challenge, when I began, so there was no challenge in flip and differentiate. They don't taste anything alike each other. So you, like you noticed, I got it on aroma only, no challenge there. But when I went into this taste challenge this morning, I expected that Jack Daniels would be the clear winner, the clear winner. And in fact, it lost, it didn't lose by much, but it lost. So Virginia Black, you win. Uh, I tend to be favorable towards it. And actually, my friend David is decidedly anti-Virginia Black. He doesn't like it. He thinks it's junk. I tend to like it. I might not have good taste facility. Maybe my tasting is bad. I'll I, That could be true, but I only have to taste for myself. See, I drink my own beer, my own wine, my own liquor. So I only have to answer to me. I'm just putting this on air and say, this is what I think. You might have a better... A perception of it and you might do a much better job i'll concede that but i'm just saying here i am and i'm doing it now uh i think there's a very good chance that there will be a beer taste challenge coming today and i also think that that will involve ice house <laughs> and keystone ice yes you heard me david don't want that virginia black says jeremy oh no he don't want it He'll sit on that bottle for 10 years, I bet you. Good looking at his cabinet. He's got stuff that I know he hadn't tasted in 10 years. But he'll never throw it away. He'll never throw it away. He's not a hoarder, per, per, per se, but he, he just will sit on it. He won't drink it. And I was telling him, why don't you drink it? I mean, what is going on? Like this wine we bought at the salvage store, $2 a bottle. Well, I thought it was very good from Spain, white wine. Oh, my bottle disappeared in a month, three weeks, two weeks. He's never even opened his. I said, why don't you open this wine? Why don't you drink it? Why'd you buy it? Oh, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to cook with it. I'm going to cook with it. I said, that stuff's not going to be any good. It's really not made to age forever. You know, it's not even a high alcohol wine, but he doesn't care what I say. He's going to he's gonna uh, answer to himself, which is a good way to do it. All right, but anyway, I'm just giving my unsolicited advice. <laughs> All right, uh, so in two days, now that one's not going to be a contest. How that could be a contest, I, I mean, I would be appalled if if old, old Forrester lost to Virginia Black. I can't see that happening. We know old Forrester is not a world-class whiskey, bourbon whiskey, but it's, you would, and it's more expensive than Jack Daniels by what a dollar? Oh no, maybe it's the same price. Oh, that's right, it just tastes better. <laughs> I think it's gonna win, you know. I think it'll be a clear winner, but that's why we do a blind taste test to find out, right? Right. Thanks for watching this video production.